This is worksheet two of the equations packet, and this is where we are going to uh, learn how to classify reactions. So we learned that all reactions have reactants on the left of the arrow and products on the right of the arrow, um, but pretty much all chemical reactions can be categorized into one of four common types. Uh, so we'll talk about composition, decomposition, single replacement, and double replacement. Um, and we'll also talk about a specific type of decomposition reaction called a combustion reaction. Uh, so a composition reaction is basically where you have two simple things combining to form something more complex. So there are some examples here, and it'd probably be good to take a look at these um, and look for patterns. Both of them start off with two things and combine into one thing. Again, in the second one, two different things here, combining into one thing. So a lot of times people refer to combustion reactions as marriage reactions, right? Oh, how sweet, right? Um, and they call them marriage reactions because you start with uh, two things to the left of the arrow, and you end up with one thing. So they're basically going to follow a pattern of something plus something turns into one thing. So that's how you can tell when you have a composition reaction. The opposite of a composition reaction is a decomposition reaction. So while the word composition means to make something, decomposition means to break something down. So if you look at the examples here, you um, in each of them start off with one thing and it breaks apart into two things. One thing into two things. So while the composition was thought of as the very sweet marriage reaction, here's the darker side of chemical reactions, this would be the divorce reaction. And so in this case you're going to know you have a decomposition reaction when you have one thing to the left of the arrow and two things to the right. In other words, you start off with one, you have your arrow, and then you have two different things. Um, a specific type of decomposition reaction that we will emphasize because these reactions are very important in our own lives is a combustion reaction. So combustion is just a fancy word for burning. And combustion is important in our life because our cars uh, have internal combustion engines, meaning there's combustion reactions occurring in our car to decompose or break down um, our fuel, gasoline generally, into um, carbon dioxide and water, and in the process also release energy, which is used to move the car. Um, so gasoline is one type of common fuel, but all of our different types of fuels um, are what we call hydrocarbons. There's the word there, meaning that they're compounds made up of some variety of carbons and hydrogens. And so hydrocarbons can always be decomposed. Um, and when they decompose, they form carbonic acid. H2CO3, and then the carbonic acid is what decomposes, so there's your decomposition reaction, into carbon dioxide, water, um, and it's worth noting, because this is why we enjoy those reactions, energy. Uh, another example of a hydrocarbon fuel other than gasoline that you put in your car is propane. So if anybody has a gas grill with that big white tank underneath it, sometimes you have to go get it refilled at the gas station, uh, that's propane, which is another compound made of hydrogen and carbon that can combust. So the kind of important things to know about combustion reactions, we'll go through and fill these in. Um, when carbonic acid forms as a product, so here's your carbonic acid, it's going to immediately decompose um, into carbon dioxide and water. All right. In fact, when you see in the wintertime, uh, it looks kind of like steam coming out of the tailpipe of your car. It's um, water vapor, so gas, the gas form of water, and carbon dioxide. And the energy is remaining in the engine to do the work of the car. Uh, burning means chemical combination 
with, let's see if I can put this in here, oxygen, that's what burning is. And so um, in, a con in a combustion reaction, a burning reaction, you're always going to see um, O2 over on the left side of the arrow. That's always going to be one of your reactants. Another word to mean burning is combustion. Just a fancy word for burning. And our common fuels are called hydrocarbons. So whether it's gasoline or propane, any of those various fuels that we use. Um, oh, geez. I messed this up for you. Hope you did this in pencil. <laughs> um, sorry, I can't talk and write at the same time, apparently. They're hydrocarbons. All right. Um, and... No, I spelled that wrong. Man, I'm on a roll. The product of combustion of a hydrocarbon produces energy. That's kind of the part that we use, plus carbon dioxide and water. That's what's coming out of your tailpipe. All right, so um, after decomposition reactions, we're on to our third type of reaction, and that is a single replacement reaction. We're going to talk about single replacement reactions and also double replacement reactions. So... Um, we've got two examples here of single replacement reactions, and you can see uh, if we look at the first example, you start off with just a single element, magnesium, and a compound. Uh, compound we can think of as like a double, right? It's made of two parts. It's made of the silver, and it's made of the nitrate polyatomic ion. And if you look over on the right and think carefully, you can see what happened is that the magnesium kind of swooped in and replaced or took the place of the silver. So now over on this side, instead of having silver and nitrate, you have magnesium and nitrate. And instead of having magnesium all alone, you have silver all alone. A similar thing is going to happen in our second example. We again have a single element and a compound, something made of two parts, in this case calcium and iodine. And if you compare carefully over to the right side, this time the chlorine swooped in and took the place of the iodine. And so now over on the, the right, your compound is made not of calcium and iodine, but calcium and chlorine. And then instead of your chlorine being all alone like it is on the left, it's your iodine that's all alone. So this reaction, I like to think of as, I don't know if anybody else does, this is the cheater, okay? This is like we're on Jerry Springer, okay? Because um, what happened was, basically, this would be a scenario where your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend, as the case may be, leaves you for another that's how I always thought of it when I was in high school learning this. I'm a little crazy, but it works, okay? So, for example, the cheater in our first example would be the nitrate, right? Here's nitrate, and it's dating silver, and they're so happy, and then all of a sudden, nitrate one day meets magnesium. And nitrate's like, hmm, magnesium, I kind of like magnesium. And all of a sudden, magnesium seizes the opportunity and whoop, swoops in. And now silver's off here crying all alone without a date. And look at where magnesium is. Sitting here dating nitrate. So nitrate is the cheater, right? In our second example, we'd have calcium and iodine dating. And they're all happy and sweet. Yay, couple of the year. Until iodine starts looking around and sees chlorine, right? And, excuse me, calcium starts looking around and sees chlorine. And calcium says, ooh, man, I liked iodine, but chlorine's looking a little better. So chlorine takes a chance and swoops in and kicks iodine out. Now here, in the end, iodine's sitting crying all alone. Calcium and chlorine are now together, yes? So it's the cheater. All right, so other than finding them on Jerry Springer, how are you gonna know if an equation is a single replacement type reaction? Well, what you're gonna see, it doesn't matter so much to look what's on the product side, but if on the reactant side, the left-hand side of the equation, you see an element 
meaning a single thing. Right, so like in our examples here, we had just magnesium or just chlorine. I know there's two chlorines, but it's, it's only one type of element, right? So if you have an element, a single thing, and you have a compound, so a compound would be a double, a combination of two types of things. Right, so in our example, our double was here the silver and the nitrate, or here the calcium and the iodine. So if you see a combination over on the, the left-hand side of an element, a single thing, and a compound, a double thing, that is your uh, signal that this is a single replacement reaction. Now, it might be easier to see the difference when we compare it to the double replacement reaction. So in a double replacement reaction, what you're going to have, you can look at the oops, example here, okay, now you're going to have a compound plus a compound. So you don't have any single elements over on the left-hand side. Okay, now I want you to look and I want you to compare this left-hand side to this right-hand side and see if you can notice what happened. I'll give you a hint. Look at the placement of the magnesium and look at the placement of the silver. Do you notice that the magnesium and the silver basically swapped places? You started off having magnesium and chlorine bonding together, right? Now when you look at your products, you've got magnesium and nitrate bonding. And you started off over on the left-hand side with silver and nitrate connected to each other. And now look at it's silver and chlorine. So basically, the magnesium and the silver swap places. Okay, so in my little mixed up mind here, while the single replacement was the cheater reaction, the double replacement is the swinger. <laughs> You're gonna have to look up what a swinger is if you don't know. Ask your mom, ask your dad. Okay, so basically this is a scenario where you and your friend Swap dates. All right. So you start off the night. You're with your date. Your friend's with his or her date. And halfway through the night, you go, mm, I don't know. I'd rather be with that other guy. And then you and your friend swap dates, right? Sure. Happens all the time, right? Right. Okay. So basically... You start off, magnesium and chlorine are a date. Oh, what a happy little couple. Silver and nitrate are a date. A very happy little couple. And halfway through the night, I don't know, something happens, and all of a sudden, they're like, eh, let's swap. So by the end of the night, magnesium and nitrate are leaving together. Silver and chlorine are leaving together. I know, the drama. Who needs to watch soap operas? I mean, you got chemistry right here. Yes? So in our second example... Similar kind of a scenario, you start off with aluminum and hydroxide together and hydrogen and nitrate together. And somewhere along the way, the aluminum and the hydrogen swap places. And now we've got the aluminum and the nitrate together and the hydrogen and the hydroxide, the OH, together. Okay, so how are you going to identify this swinger reaction where the two atoms in front swap places? Well, it doesn't, again, matter what's on the right side, the product side of the equation. What you're going to look for is, over on the reactants, the left side, a compound and a compound. So instead of having a single and a compound, an element and a compound, like you did in the single replacement reaction, now you've got two compounds. And remember, a compound is a double, something made of two parts, like magnesium and chlorine, sitting next to silver and nitrate, two parts. So if you see two doubles, two compounds over on the left-hand side, that is your signal that this is a double replacement reaction. And when you get to class, we'll take a look at a bunch of different reactions and have you practice categorizing them.